Yo, what is going on guys? It is Derek with Riley Restorations. Today, I'm gonna to give you the tools and the knowledge to color match any color you can possibly think of on a midsole, an upper, an outsole, wherever. You're gonna be nailing these colors by the end of the videos, I promise. So before we dive headfirst in this video, I want to go ahead and just get rid of the boring stuff that you guys are tired of hearing of and I have to say all the time, but it really means a lot to me. If you guys are finding this content valuable, it is helping you, or if you're getting questions answered, or you just follow us on Instagram, or you're new here, I'd really appreciate if you guys hit that subscribe and even the bell icon so you know when we go live, so you don't have to get spammed with all this stuff about, hey, we got a new video, we're doing this, we're doing that. We also have this cool new feature that we're doing on our website, and it should pop up. If not, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom of the website, and you can see it's a newsletter. We're actually doing a weekly newsletter where you could potentially be featured as the spotlight artist. Every week we're doing a new artist that we're featuring. The first week we did Des Customs, if you're familiar with him. Week two, we did AstroTorf Customs. We're doing some people that we already kind of know, but I definitely want to expand and do some unknown artists or maybe some smaller artists that I see a lot of potential in. And it definitely helps to use our hashtags, tag us on all our pictures, and we'll definitely see your work and we'll definitely feature you at some point. The reason I'm doing this video today is just because I've literally never seen any guides focusing just on shoes. Yeah, there's a ton of color theory videos. There's a bunch of stuff about mixing paint to match furniture and walls and interiors and things like that. But we are focusing just on shoes and that makes things just a little bit different, especially since we're using Angelus paint or you can use Jacquard, but I'm using Angelus today for this. Guys, trust me, we've all seen it. We've seen the before and afters, and sometimes you've probably done it, and trust me, I'm not perfect. I've done it too. I've been in this exact situation, but you post the before and after, you have the before, it's like pretty good, and you have the after, and you can tell that the midsole or whatever color you tried to match in this case is not spot on, and it's very obvious when you do a before and an after on top of each other. Now that Instagram allows you to have separate pictures and you can swipe, you can still go back and forth and kind of be like, oh, that ain't really the same, but this is basically to eliminate that because we've had this where you get on the flip side and people are like, yo, that doesn't look right. And you get all defensive and you're like, well, you know, my, my aunt's dog came over and like he's, he's allergic to light so I couldn't take pictures with the light on in the after. I mean, whatever it is, like you get it. And you know, you're like, all right, this was not exact, but you just gave up because it's so frustrating. You wasted, you know, an ounce of paint and they only come in these little one ounce jars or maybe you had a four ounce and you wasted half it or you're just lazy and you want to get done with it. So this is going to help with that tremendously. So if you guys are looking for an easy way out, I'm telling you this is not it. It is difficult, but understanding color and how these concepts can be applied and how things work is gonna make it super easy for you guys, or at least a lot easier than it was. There's still gonna be some trial and error, but once you kind of get it clicking, it's gonna be a lot easier for you. So as you guessed, and as you probably didn't wanna see, this is gonna revolve around the color wheel. It does not lie. It's been around for a long, long, long time for a reason. And this is the guide that I use, but once you kind of get familiar with it, you'll basically know in your mind how colors work, or especially after this video, you should have a better understanding. But we're gonna hang on to this for a little bit later. But I wanna go ahead and just define a couple terms. And this isn't gonna go way too deep because I never took like a color theory class or anything like that. This is just from my personal experience, my own research, just learning how color kind of works and applying it to the medium that I work with. The first thing I'm gonna cover is hue. Hue is literally just a color. I mean, literally a color anywhere on this color wheel. So I just pick, boom, right here whatever this brownish orange thing is, that's a hue. Then we get into these terms that people use all over the place. They're not using it properly, which again, I did it too, but once you learn how to describe colors and what you're actually looking for, it makes things much easier, especially on a mental level. When you're trying to think, how do I get this to this color or make it look this way? Or why does it look a little bit darker? What do I do? This helps a lot. So those terms are gonna be tint, shade, and tone. Those are the three big ones. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is tint. Tint is simply adding white to a color or white to a hue to kind of calm it down and make it a little less harsh. And that's like when you see those vans that got really popular, people were doing like yellows and reds and blues, basically like a lot of primary colors, but it was really matted down or pastel. That's how you get those pastel colors. And that's why it works really well. And those vans look super cool. Like I, I didn't ever make one and I get why they are popular. It's because it's pleasing to the eye. Then basically on the opposite side of tint is gonna be shade. Shade is adding black. That's gonna make it a little bit darker, a little more rich and a little more full, if you will, but it's very easy to get that really muddy. I try not to add black to colors if I can't because it gets way too muddy. So then if I'm not adding black, how am I going to make a color darker? And that's where our third thing comes in, tone. The tone of a color is adding black and white, or I guess you could say it's gray. And that's just any mix of gray. You could use, you know, a cement for gray or a bone 
or a light gray or dark gray. Or if you want to get more involved, you can literally add black and white yourself. And again, adding black can be really, really tricky, especially when you're working with small quantities like the little tray that we're going to be working with. Because adding one drop to, you know, a quarter of an ounce or a fourth of an ounce or whatever is going to make that really, really muddy really, really quick. So adding gray is usually your best bet. Then there's a fourth option. And this one's kind of more particular to sneakers, or at least I'm going to relate it to sneakers. And I don't know if there's actually a word for it, like tint, toad, shade, hue, whatever. And that fourth method is finding a similar color and adding that like a true blue here because you know it's darker it's still a blue this one's got a little more purple in it it looks like just you know looking at it through the bottle and i know it changes when you take off the lid but that's going to adjust this hue so you're going to be starting with a different hue or basically creating a different hue to work with and then you can start adding your whites your grays your blacks if you need to on the flip side if you need to make it lighter grab something like a mellow two or maybe a, I don't know the other names of all the light blues, but this is the light blue, but just a lighter blue, like a pale blue, I think is the color. You can start mixing those in to give you a better hue to start with and then start adjusting the tone, the shade, and the tint. Let's go ahead and just jump into it and I'll kind of do some voiceovers and explain those little tips and tricks I told you about how I'm mixing these colors. Again, this one I already found out on these. This one I haven't even touched, so you're gonna see that you know, basically live. I'm gonna cut it up and give you the tips and tricks to figure out how to get this color, but also give you some general information on how to mix colors on your own. All right, so let's go ahead and cover a few things that are gonna be helpful for this. The main one that I like to use are these little leather strips, and if I remember, I got these from turtlefeathers.net back in the day. I'm sure you can find these little test leather strips, just Google that, or if I find some, I'll put them down in the description if you wanna check them out. These really help since there's minimal places on the midsole that you can paint match, and trust me, sometimes you will use the entire surface of this to match a color because it will take forever so using these strips is really nice because you can test it you can let it dry and you can hold it right up and see if it is an exact match and that leads me into the second point every time you're using acrylic paint especially in this case since most of you guys are going to be using angela's brand when you mix the paint it is going to dry a little bit darker than what you see so if you hold it up on a q-tip and you're holding it right here and you see that it matches it's going to be too dark we're also gonna use this little thing right here. I forget the name of it right now. And this is just nice because there's a couple of these little dishes that you can mix your paint in. And what I like to do is progressively work so I know where my color's going and if it's changing or if it's getting closer. And I know what I added to this one as opposed to this one. If it's getting too dark or if it's looking too purple or it's looking too light, I know at what step I messed up and I can see where I was closest and then start with that mix and start building on that to get a good color that matches. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the military blue just because Angelus calls it military blue. So I figured why not start with it? I know it is not right, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pour some out here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put some just straight up military blue on that little leather stick for a sample. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and take the heat gun to this and let it dry and see how that color looks. So here's how it looks when it's fully dry. You can tell there it's a little bit darker. All right, so right off the bat, you can tell that this is a little bit more muted or a little lighter so definitely we're going to have to adjust the tint which is again just adding white but let's go ahead and start with adding some white just to see where that kind of takes this color and then we'll compare it to the midsole here it doesn't take much to adjust that color so be careful just do drop by drop and if you're trying to remember a color because you get that shoe in frequently or you have a couple pairs coming in or you just want to have it on hand and you have extra bottles just do drop by drop get those little eye droppers again i'll link those down below in the description if you guys need them it should be pretty easy to find though but that way you know for sure how to replicate that color and just just do it drop by drop, make a smaller batch, and then you can scale it. So if it's 10 drops of red and two drops of white and one drop of yellow to make, you know, fire red or whatever color you're making, if you want to make a bigger batch, just multiply that by five. So it's 10 drops turns into 50 drops or whatever. And you can make a bigger one and just save that bottle, have it on the shelf and be good to go. So now here's the new blue. This is the military and the white. So we changed the tint or we just added white to it is the definition. I'm just going to go ahead and paint a strip right next to that and just see how that color is kind of changing. And you saw what I was doing just there. I'm just wiping this brush off. This is to ensure that I get that old color off of here. I'll just start wiping around to make sure I get most of it off. You can grab a towel or whatever and clean it off. And then I make sure I oversaturate this brush just to make sure I get all of this color through this brush and I don't get any streaks of the old color. So let's take this and just go ahead and brush this on right underneath. And again, that's the nice part about these strips is that it shows you the progression of how this color is coming along. This palette, that's the word I'm looking for, palette. Palette is the word I was looking for. We'll show you the progression of the color, but this shows you when it's dry. Again, it's gonna be a little bit darker, but this is still nice to have as a reference too. So again, there's that color. You can see the difference slightly. Hopefully on the camera, you can see that difference. So now there's that second color. You can still, it just doesn't look right. So I'm thinking that we're gonna to have to change the hue or the base color that we started with. Honestly, I think we can probably add just a little bit of a darker blue and I'll go ahead and look through the blues that I have 
and let you know what I'm adding to get these. So you guys can have at least the military four. These are from 2006. Basically just working through, seeing how the color's changing. And then this is a little bit too light and that was with just one drop of white. So we're gonna go back and add a little bit of a darker blue here. And again, that's that fourth step. So let's go ahead and just try this true blue here. And I'm gonna add just one drop, mix that in and see where that takes us. Let's try and get one drop in there, a bigger drop if we can. Now let's go ahead and mix that up. Try and mix it evenly, especially in these little cups. Some can slip up on the edge here, but try and get most of it so you know your ratios if you're doing them in your head or if you're not writing these down, at least you know in the future. Like I remember I added military, a little bit of white, then some true blue. So you know how much you added roughly and you have a base to work with. All right, so that looks pretty solid. Let's go ahead and put this on the strip and see how we're doing. So again here, you can see this is why I really like these strips so you can see the progression. It doesn't look like there's a lot of change on there, but I'm gonna go ahead and compare it to the shoe. So right here again, you can tell it's still a little bit darker on the midsole than it is on this third color here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more true blue and see how that works. So this took me about 10 minutes and we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six colors, but boom. There it is, you can see at the bottom, the light is gonna hit it weird. I'm gonna show you how to do a final test to make sure that color is right. Again, you remember we started, we had just the regular military. This is the military with a little bit of white. And then we added a little bit of true blue. I added more true blue and I realized this wasn't going the way that I wanted to. So I actually went back and added some more military because I realized we were kind of straying away from the color that we had started with that we liked, we just needed lighter. And then the final step that I put in here was a little bit of sapphire and sapphire is what did it. So the final test now is to pick a spot. And again, this is a good tip. Make sure you don't just strip your midsoles and be like, shit, I don't remember what color I need. Keep a little bit, if not a full midsole, so you can color match if you know you're gonna to need to color match. So you can do this final step here. I'm just gonna go ahead and take that brush and that final color and paint somewhere solid along here and dry it with the heat gun. And you should see that color just disappear. And I'll try and get a good shot of that here for you guys. So right here, if that light is catching that, you can see the edge of it right there and right there. It already is a pretty good match, but you can definitely see the contrast if I move the shoe around. Right there is probably your best bet. You can see it, that hard line. I'm gonna go ahead and use the heat gun here and see if that's gonna match in perfectly and blend well. You should start to see that just disappear. See how that's blended in? You can see because we painted pretty heavy, you can see the line. But when you rotate it and the light's hitting it, you can see that color blends in very nicely. I, honestly, I might go back and just add one more drop of sapphire because it looks just a tad bit light. But I'm saying even right now, this is probably going to up your game a ton because this is going to be much closer than what you had done before and definitely get you a push in the right direction. But I think I'm gonna add one more drop of sapphire here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one the way it is and paint the other and show you a side by side so you can see the exact color match that we end up with with these same methods. So now you guys are probably thinking, well, I mean, that was easy. You had military four to start with. So now I'm gonna go ahead and teach you and start touching on the different subjects and different shoes and colors so you guys can apply this to any shoe and any color that you're trying to match. For this example, I'm actually gonna use these Cigar Sixes for reference, and it's gonna apply again to any shoes, and I'll kind of describe the way I got these colors and the processes I did, and so you can start to think and formulate in your mind how you can work on any shoe and apply these basic methods. And I know I'm probably gonna get comments like, how do I mix this, how do I do that? If you guys do have a question, feel free to drop them in the comments. If I do know or have an idea at least, I can try and help you and say, try and use this color, or I've done that before, I think I use this and this and this, at least to get you guys like a push in the right direction. There's not gonna be a video for every single color Color, that's just impossible. But today I'm gonna to show you how I got from here to here and the methods and cues that I took from this shoe to get that that you guys can apply to every shoe. So when the client sent these in, I had a bunch of colors to pick from as I knew I would definitely need to mix this and make a custom color and figure that out. But I do have a lot of different color paints, so it kind of helps that I have a good starting point. However, I know not everyone has this many paints and has been doing this as long. So I got a couple tips for you guys. And trust me, I know the headache of ordering just one paint for one job. If you can start to get a schedule, again, you can check out our productivity video so you have a better idea how to schedule and know when things are coming in. You can check that out up here. I'll go ahead and link it. But if you know what's coming in, you built the schedule, you get more productive and you get basically, just what I'm trying to say is just get a schedule. You'll know what's coming in. You can start to place those order ahead of time. So I knew I had these cigar sixes. I had some military fours. So I could have ordered, you know, some burgundies, some reds, a chili red or a fire red. Um, 
a brown or whatever I thought I needed. And then the military is like, I'll get a couple blues if I don't have blues or say, you know, apply this to any sneaker. If you know it's coming, you can group those orders together. And again, just be better with your money so you don't have to pay for shipping a bunch of times just to get a one ounce thing of paint. Sometimes you will have to do that. I've been in that situation before. It kind of sucks because you thought this would be close. Then you see, okay, this color would probably be easier to work with. But go ahead and combine those and use that productivity video. There's a bunch of really good tips in growing this business or just saving money in general if you're doing it for yourself. So let's go ahead and get into the learning portion of how you can start to figure out what colors you need for what shoe or what color on the midsole, upper, whatever it is. So on this shoe, you can see here, I already matched these. The nice part with this shoe, and you'll see this on a lot of shoes, is that it will match something else. So in this case, on these that I need to paint here, I know that that color matches here and here, so I can use that as a guide. You can also see tones of that here, also on the tongue here, on the jump man, but you can see even from here, to here to here these are all different so pick one and again just look at a dead stock image i usually use like stock x or flight club or something it's usually a good reference to see the stock photo that jordan brand or nike released and you can see which color that matches so then from there apply what you just learned in the first half of the video and go ahead and find a color or pick a color order a color pull from your collection whatever you have that you think will be close just pick a starting point and go from there don't think about it too much you just want to start as it will save you a ton of time as opposed to just sitting there scratching your head like is this perfect or does this look good or researching about it so for this color right here i thought that the chili red looked pretty close on top of that i actually did have to order a few things ahead of time so i went ahead I grabbed some Tahitian pink too. And then I also have a couple of different reds I had laying around like scarlet red, regular red, just to change that red a little bit. And I actually found what I originally thought would be just chili red and white. I actually ended up using chili red, white, and a little bit of the Tahitian pink to make that just a little bit more pink. Cause you can see this is a little more pink, kind of going towards the orange side, but I knew I would need to adjust that just a little bit. So I added a couple extra colors. On the flip side, the burgundy was a little bit more difficult. So I grabbed some extra colors for that. And I actually, again, did start with just regular burgundy. I knew that would probably be pretty close. I went ahead and ordered some brown because so there's definitely some brown tones. I'll get into why I got brown. I also got saddle here. I got raspberry just in case because I thought I saw a little bit of like more purplish hue in that burgundy. I actually ended up not using that. And then surprise enough, what really made this color work for me and match perfectly was the chili red. So the way I got to that was basically just looking at the shoe. Look at it this way. Every colorway works for a reason. There's a reason why you see these weird colors on this shoe right here, and you're thinking, it looks really dope and it works. Some don't look good, I will say that, but most of the shoes that people really like, they work for a reason, and you can't quite just put a finger on why that looks good. But in this case, again, ignore all this. I still need to clean it up. I'm not done with these. I just want to make this video for you guys. You see, in this case, you have a brown upper, like this burgundy-ish right here, this bright red, there's definitely some blue like in the midsole. Uh, there's this color, there's some gold and a few other colors on here throughout, but you're just like, why does that work? Like you wouldn't automatically think of this unless you were in color theory or you knew color really well or design. So what's worked for me really well, again, there's a bunch of other ways to get to the correct color. This is just what works with me and I want to share it with you guys is using these other colors in these colors that you're trying to match. So thinking there's a brown on here, there's a reason this is cohesive. So that led me to believe that there might be some brown in this color. I definitely knew there probably wasn't brown in this color just because it's so bright. There can maybe be gold, but that didn't make sense in this case. So just looking at the shoe and thinking, okay, maybe how can I work this color in here? And do I see any brown tones in here? So for instance, when I was doing a color match on the Dornbecker fours with that lime green popsicle, I was having such a hard time with a bunch of different greens. I added yellow. And again, that goes back to knowing this color wheel and knowing how you can kind of change colors. So if I have an orange, it needs to be more red, add some red or some violet in here. And it will start to shift this way. So if you have orange, you add a little violet, you're going to slowly start shifting this way on the wheel. Everything's going to be connected. So what I did with those is I started adding yellow because I needed it to be you know, more of a yellow than it was green and start shifting over this way. Or I could have went the opposite way. And what I really needed to do is add blue. I needed to go back this way. And what made me think about that is the Dornbecker 4, as you see here, does have some blue tints. So I tried to find a blue that looks similar to that and dropped a little bit of that into the mix that I already made for that lime green. And that made it pop and that made the perfect color for me. So going back to these, I ended up for this color mix, I don't have it written down exactly. I just mixed it. I started with burgundy because I thought it was pretty close. As you can see, it's way too dark. It's not quite there colors are a little bit different and I actually added in a little bit of the chili red because the chili red right here is the base or the starting hue or color that I use for this red so I dropped a little bit of chili red in there and then I dropped just a little bit of brown in there to kind of pull all of this together again this may not work every single time but for me it's got me very close if not 
push in the right direction so I know how to color match that and how to get close to it. So those are the main tips that I have for you guys, combining what you learned in the beginning of this video with the tips that I just shared with you of using the different colors on the shoe to match that. I know every shoe isn't gonna be the same. It won't always work, but if you're having a hard time, start to look at the other colors on the shoe and use that as kind of an inspiration or an idea and apply the things that you learned in the beginning from the color wheel on how to get closer to that color or how that color might be hidden in there. You'll start to notice after a while, you'll be able to kind of recognize and look at a color and see, you know, a little bit of green in there. Maybe there's just like a little bit of yellow. Your eye will start to be trained and you'll learn that. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get with mixing. Again, if you guys do have questions about certain colors, feel free to put it in the comments and I'll try and help you if I have done it. I'll try to remember how I did that or what colors could possibly work. Or we can start our own discussion down below. If you comment and someone else has done it, guys, feel free to help each other out. That's what this is all about. Me helping you and others helping each other. The world definitely needs more of that. So we can start a little community down in the comments trying to get a little color reference. And maybe one day down the road, you know, we'll have a list of 20 different colors that you can just refer to this video and be like, boom, that's it, I've tried it. I'll try and comment if I do it myself or if I think it works or I'll mix it up and see if it is the right color and kind of verify it with you guys. So again, I wanna thank you guys for checking out the video. If you did find this helpful, I appreciate a subscription to the channel. It costs you nothing and it means the world to me. Again, we have a newsletter going out. You can check the website, got a bunch of stuff down in the description, but I'm gonna save your time and start filming another video for you guys. You can get the biggest Chanel back in the store if you want it. I gave them the drill, they set it up, I got them on it. I bought a new paddock, I had to watch so I two tones. Taking these drugs, I'm gonna be up until the morning. That ain't your car, you just a Lisa, you don't own it. If I'm in the club, I got that five on the performing. The back end just came in and I'll run. Five's the little cute shit, they all.